clapping for our NHS staff, clapping for our public services staff, for those who work tirelessly to keep society going, for those who work to keep us alive, clapping, cheering and thanking as we have done yesterday, last week and as I will do so every moment that I possibly can, clapping and cheering is great and I hope you who are doing these things not only hear that applause but feel my personal thanks. I hope you can feel it. I want to thank you personally. I want to thank everybody in the medical profession in any way whatsoever whom from the moment of my birth in a hospital in Germany delivered by a Royal Army Medical Corps a doctor, a Captain Unwin, delivered C-section. Well, that was, if you like, my very first ever contact with medicine. My birth. I want to thank you down those years of my life into my 60s. I want to thank you and the families possibly of doctors and nurses and therapists who have treated me over the years in all kinds of places in all countries who have ministered to me who have been kind to me have given to me that touch of healing understanding and compassion I want to thank you all. While I still have time, I want to thank especially the staff at Papworth Hospital UK, now Royal Papworth. When I was transferred on from Peterborough District Hospital, having had my heart attack, you saved my life. I know you saved many other lives and are still trying to do that. I want to thank you because I remember going up to Patworth about my um, sleep apnea and I remember meeting on the steps of the old hospital the lady who put the stent in the stents in that saved my life. I remember saying to her, can I give you a hug? And she said, sure. And I gave her a hug. I think of all of you now, particularly at Sir Royal Papworth, where I know you have been developing an exovent ventilator based on the design of all things of an old iron lung. You are respiratory and chest disease and heart disease specialist. I think of you. And maybe even that doctor is still there. I think of you. And I thank you for what you did for me. I want people also to realise something I just read in The Guardian. Our NHS staff wearing what protective gear they have. And believe me, I know it's still not enough. People working in ICU in particular are actually getting sores across their foreheads and down there and down there from where wearing the masks and the PPE is actually making lesions on their skin. I thank you for what you are 
doing. Now, sadly, we are reaching a point where even one-to-one -one nursing in ICU as it would normally be, as it was when I was in ICU, has actually had to change in some cases to one ICU professional looking after about six patients. The strain on all of our nursing and medical staff is incalculable. Psychologically, they will be dealing with watching, unfortunately, people die, watching treatment not being successful, and then also this actual physical barrier between themselves and their patients whom they, I am sure, would want to reassure with touch, but they can't do so. Just think of them for one second. Think of the support that they will need as human beings in their lives, having dealt with situations that are so traumatic. Think of this. And government. It seems almost ridiculous to speak to you because you don't care. It seems almost ridiculous to ask that you will put procedures in place to look after these medical staff afterwards, to deal with the psychological long-lasting effects this will have on them, as they have been trying to save the lives of people like me. One other thing I read from a doctor today in ICU, and please don't forget it, I just want to say it and I would like you to share it too. COVID-19 has been almost marketed as a disease that gets the oldies. The oldies, the weak and the sick. Right from the beginning, every, ever since we heard all about underlying medical conditions on almost every single report. Well, just think about what this doctor said a little bit further, will you? Those underlying medical conditions could be your mother, your father, with mild type 2 diabetes. It could be your sister, your brother, with asthma. It could be your uncle, your aunt, your grandparent with COPD. Please, don't underestimate this disease. As the doctor said, it doesn't discriminate. But today, 17th day of lockdown, thank you NHS. And Tories, you hypocritical scumbags, now you see, and what is more, the people that voted for you see, what 10 years of cutting back the NHS has achieved. I have to say that to you, you scum. Your absolute selfish scum. And I sense that you deliberately delayed responding to this pandemic so that more old, sick, weak, disabled, poor people could die. I think you wanted that to happen because you always put profit before people. I think you wanted that to happen. But no matter what you have wanted, there are good people, decent people, lovely people, 
people prepared to put themselves in harm's way to help us. Thank you. And that thank you also goes out to my son, who, as I always say, is working in an NHS intensive care unit. That thank you especially goes out to my son and all the colleagues in his hospital. Stay safe as far as you can. Obey the lockdown. Support each other.